So welcome everyone to this uh, final plenary session officially called Closing Ceremony. Uh, so I will share it with uh, Sarah Eggleston, who is the science officer at PAGES. So during this uh, ceremony or session, it's not so much a ceremony, uh, we'll give some feedbacks and thoughts about this week and maybe more than this single week. Uh, there will be a, also a short overview of some scientific highlight of the Open Science meeting, feedbacks from the YSM, and some concluding words from the local organizing committee, from the scientific program committee, and uh, from uh, PAGES. So I will first give the floor, the stage, or at least the screen to Pradeep Srivastava, and uh, he will give some highlight from some major scientific outcomes from these OSM. So Pradeep, I think you want to, to share your screen as well to tell us what the, the, the conveners of the different session highlighted during their, their sessions. Thank you, Pradeep. Should I go ahead? Yes, please. And you can put your slides in um, view mode in, yes, in full screen mode. Thank okay. you. Right. Thank you, Dr. Mary France. And it's an honor to be part of the closing ceremony. And I'm glad that uh, due to this uh, presentation that I committed, I listened to most of the talks and I read, I went through the abstracts of the presentations. And here I am with uh, Pages Agadi 2022 Science Highlights. And uh, our friend, uh, Lindsay Gilson, who is also a SSC member of Pages, helped in provide, providing this word cloud that is based on the titles and texts of all the presentations that are made here. And uh, maybe not made, but it, it is there in the abstract volume. And if you can see, the sizes of these phrases uh, is, are proportional to number of times they occurred in the present. So it, it represents basically what, how much the weightage individual phrases have. And the first and foremost is the climate variability, climate change, climate reconstruction, environmental change. And these are past climate. And these four or five things have been discussed over the different time scales from uh, of Pleistocene, Holocene, and in different geological settings like geo mountains, coastal environments, marine settings, and even deserts and arid systems. So, I mean, all four days have been, uh, have lived actually the core of pages all through. And now, with this, I'm go going to present you with the day wise uh, highlights. And there is a disclaimer that these highlights are based on the inputs that are given by the individual session chairs and my own reading. So any ignorance may please be excused. So the first day was the day of, I mean, they started with, uh, we have all these uh, kinds of sessions and uh, on uh, last interglacial, Scott Mary of Africa, LGM to Anthropocene, past extremes, VARs and teleconnections. And uh, last interglacials was really an interesting session where, uh, and it was a very popular st study that came out on the first day where a lot of new data set was synthesized and that allowed us to get into some holistic view of this uh, last interglacials. And uh, the data uh, over the past 620, 620K was very impressive that was presented on glaciation, mammalian and human evolution in Southeastern Ethiopian uh, rift. I mean, this, this was presented there and it was very impressive, a review challenged the idea of connection between onset of North, Northern Hemisphere, uh, Hemisphere glaciation increase in African aridity and mammalian turnover. And this was a newer idea that was brought in. And then a 40K record of vegetation in central China 
and East Asian monsoon active, uh, I mean, suggested that East Asian monsoon was active during LGM and human activity became prominent only during the late last, late Holocene. And thus the position in East Asian monsoon system uh, de dependent region re actually reflects the human activity rather than the increased aridity. And this was something new look to the uh, older system, uh, I mean, problems. And then a very interesting study was presented the Chilean earthquake of 1960 was seen, was observed in gender chronology, and the way it was looked, it, it, it actually mimicked the river, riverine evolution in the, in the area where the, these gender chronological records were reconstructed. And then a 20, a 250k VAG record from Dead Sea was pr presented, and that implied on desert storms, dust, and flash floods occurrences in the past. And Holocene dynamics of ITCZ or northeastern part of the southern Southern America was produced, and uh, that explained conflicting a lot of uh, older existing conflicting paleoclimatic reports. So this was the day one, and the day two had not many sessions as as usual, and it, the sessions were actually uh, on climate variability across different time scales past climates, climate over the changing mountains and uh, uh, forelands, peatland ecosystem was a central, central theme that day, paleo sciences and management feedbacks, art in science and changing climate, planet, quantifying and predicting terrestrial ecosystem. And in this, the pages 2K paint three group demonstrated that the climate model exhibit stronger temperature covariance across continental regions than proxy-based reconstructions. And then simulation models demonstrated that sea ice extent in Arctic is more controlled by summer insulation than that in Southern oceans by carbon dioxide concentrations. Holocene paleofire history was presented and paleofire history tree line and climate relationship in Alpine, Australia, Carpathians and Northern Mexico, Gamo Island, Ethiopian and many different types of geological settings was presented. And the evidence that came out was very interesting that the fires were more prominent during the warm and wetter conditions and increased human activity. Actually, this, this relationship break seems to be breaking around two to three K. And that's when they said that the fire are more controlled by uh, humans presence. And the new peatland modeling tool was presented that specifically was developed the, the peatlands that were there on that are there on the floodplain setting. And this was done by coupling a modified version of existing model, the Bob 1D, and with the river basin water balance model was presented in this, uh, in this uh, OSM. And very interesting was, I mean, the uh, session was there on the art and science in changing. This was a kind of an outreach program uh, system. And that suggested that music of changing planet. I mean, this data, uh, I mean, mus musicalization of data and its potential for earth science outreach and education, past, uh, past time travel, and, uh, and it was demonstrated for Andes mountain systems, I mean, a geological record of Andes mountain. And then a tipping point record for 620,000 20, years was presented from Ethiopian Rift. It was really impressive data. Day three was dedicated to sessions on obliquity versus Precision testing, what is controlling over what on the climate reports, high resolution marine archives, hydrology of arid regions, tipping points in earth systems, fire regime behavior over time and space again, and volcanic on uh, impacts on climate and societies. And vegetation density, fire relationship was reconstructed over Holocene. And the presentation suggested that using charcoal, I mean, this was done by uh, using charcoal and sedimentary DNA. I mean, this workshop was. Uh, Interesting in a way that new proxies of biomarkers and sedimentary DNA ancient DNA were, were applied over and over in many presentations. And this was done on Siberian Lake that indicated that open forests may be more vulnerable to wildfires. And this is a new interesting finding. And calib calibration data that is always very important was produced to quantify climate signals within coral geochemical records and published records were tested. An interesting record was produced on giant modern clam shells of 23.7 year long data was generated by scalar chronology of these giant clams from Southern China Sea. 
and that it's reconstructed, the temperatures were reconstructed and potential and its potential in generating high resolution paleoclimate record was, was actually demonstrated. Analysis of for, for analysis and forecast of soil erosion risk using multi-criteria and artificial intelligence methodologies was demonstrated. And this demonstrated actually that migration of soil vulnerability, erosion vulnerability is moving towards high land. This is important in terms of uh, planning. And another paper on climate, weather, and socioeconomic conditions that corresponding to mid 17th century eruptions that relates to volcanic eruptions and climate change. And the, the, this cluster actually uh, were, was uh, was picked up using the sulfur peaks in ice cores, and the data indicated that strong linkages exist between the volcanic cooling and socioeconomic reversals in Eurasia. And then linkages were explored between the orbital eccentricity to 100k glacial cycles, and the data indicated that neither glacial cycles length nor termination timing suggests that obliquity has influence over over density eccentricity or precision over the at least late Pleistocene cycles. So day three, day four was dedicated to future pathways to sustainability, climate change, gender chronology, regional and trans-regional climate systems, elusive past and a tool for uncertain future to, to understand the future. Cryosphere changes impacts on Arctic coastal environments and ecosystem during the Holocene, past global changes, of course. And the data was presented, suggested that I mean, one of the new proxy was tested and snow drill uh, stomach oil deposit is explored as a new proxy to reconstruct summer sea ice dynamics close to Antarctic through last glacial cycle. Sea surface temperature and productivity gradients across Eastern Equatorial Pacific were uh, very different during the Pliocene and period was definitely warmer than now was explained in one of the presentation. Sedimentary DNA, uh, ancient DNA, provided finer details of the Holocene environmental changes in Arctic. Another paper on uh, suggesting lithium magnesium ratio in cold water coral skeletons revealed synchronous five to seven degrees of cooling of thermocline temperatures during last glacial maxima in Atlantic and this is significant uh, data. And another interesting uh, proxy was developed using microscope based reflected light images of tree ring surface samples. And this provided an unbiased long tree ring chronologies in much more effective way and rather lesser efforts. And uh, a new proxy, a new chronometer. I mean, it's not a new chronometer, but it was tested in a different way. I mean, 81 Krypton and 40 Argon chronometer attempted successfully on ice to date these ice, the bottom ice. And this required a lot lesser sample than it usually be. It usually used to be. So this was an important advancement in the technique and the bottom ice of Tadis and Tadis and Don't See were dated. And using pollen charcoal, Dung spores, timing of megafaunal extinction was established in Eastern Andes that was between 22 to 11 K. An important implication was that when climate and megafaunal synergy collapsed, this triggered to habitat specific ecological repercussions in the area. And the final day was dedicated to past flood variability and uh, future risk management, 2 K environment, human interaction, and Holocene uh, synthesis and many societal society related uh, sessions and flood records from as indicated a warming of plus five i mean warming of 0.5 to 1.2 degrees celsius may lead to 20 to 25 to 50 percent decrease in frequency of large floods that is 10 year recurrence interval but they are suggesting that extreme events that were that, uh, that have 100 year recurrence may may experience uh, exponential rise due to this warming and variety of proxies like pollen, charcoal, geochemistry, biomarkers from South Africa, Mozambique, I mean, uh, Mozambique and Namibia and across different time scales were tested and presented. Lead curve and lead isotope data from dated Carpathian peat recorded, uh, record provided evidence of metal smelting activities before, during and post-Roman period. It implied that gold and 
silver mining activities did not close following the Roman withdrawal from the region. This was, uh, I mean, this was a part of debate earlier also. And several pre presentations outlined new methods for understanding anthropogenic signals in pollen reports, including the use of chemical fingerprinting of serial pollen. This is important. And global economic damage, this is I mean, something very new has come out. Global economic damage data provided an evidence for upward trends of inflation adjusted damages caused by extreme weather and climatic events. Now mind it, relative to its wealth, Europe is the most affected continent followed by the North America and Asia. So this is something kind of a signing off of pages from my side. And thank you so much. This is all from my side, Mary. Thank you very much, Pradeep, for this very comprehensive overview of the major outcome from the discussions. And also it shows how broad are the topics dealt with within pages. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Our next speakers um, will be, well, there will be Tobias Schneider, Juliana Nogueira, and Samadhi Mete. And they will report on what happened during the YSM, so the week before the OSM. Uh, I don't know who is starting among the three of them, but the, all the three were participants in the YSM and they will tell us what happened then. So yes, the floor is yours, Toby, Juliana, Madi. Thank you very much for the very nice overview of our the OSM titles or and keynotes. And um, I guess we have to share our screen now. And then Marie Pons, thank you very much for the <clears throat> nice introduction. And welcome everyone also from our side. I'm Toby and together with Juliana and Madi, we have the honor to provide you with a very brief recap about the YSM Young Science Meeting. The Young Scientists Meeting aims at equipping early career researchers with skills that go actually beyond the hard sciences, so successful applicants can get the opportunity to network among other ECRs and get trained in a variety of soft skills in different sessions, led by actually very well established researchers and scientists involved in pages too. And the format usually takes place just before the Open Science Meeting, the first YSM took place in 2009 in Corvallis, and this year it celebrated already its fourth anniversary. As we had people from different time zones, the events were held twice a day to accommodate people more inclusively. And we were this time about 54 participants from 20 countries. As you can see, re very nicely represented in the so-called um, YSM hockey stick graph. And we were together for about five days discussing about 12 different topics in four breakout rooms. Some of the topics included social media for scientists, the right balance between research and private life, the future of scientific publication, grant funding agencies, or also be a part of the climate change solution, et cetera. And with that, I would like to hand over to Juliana. Thanks, Toby. Hope everybody can hear me well. So I'll talk a little bit more about how did the YSM look this year as we were online. So uh, the venue uh, this year was the Gather Town. And the Gather Town is basically uh, what we can imagine if the ones that played video games like that uh, old 2D RPG video games like Chrono Trigger and so on that we played, but remastered like Pokemon for the younger ones. So basically, as you can see here in the screen, there was this, uh, the main uh, venue, the main room. And then as Toby said, we have two sessions a day and then we were meeting in this space over here. As you can see here in the top, there were some breakout rooms and we had assigned and we had our timing sheet for which room we should go in which time so we could discuss the, the, the topics that uh, Toby just said. And then we also had this presentation advice. So you can see here and below that you have the presentations for group one and two. And if you enter that, we could see the posters for everybody, the pre-recorded videos for the presentations and so on. And this is really nice because each one of us got assigned one or two presentations so we can evaluate and give the feedbacks for our colleagues. 
So this is really nice as well. In terms of a social event, we had a cooking competition. Of course, we could not taste the food, but we could see the pictures and that's how we, the, the competition was uh, judged. And uh, it was couscous, the main dish that we prepared. And finally, we also had a session uh, that we called the Cluedo, which is, was like a game where we, some of us, we had some um, roles as climate skeptics and the other one as climate uh, change uh, de uh, defendants. And then we had our tips and we had to, mainly the, the whole idea was to talk to each other, to have like a nice break to uh, an idea to talk with each other. So it was really nice and I really enjoyed um, In terms of the, the usability of the, of the Gather Town, for, uh, for me, at least, it worked quite well. It was really fun and gave this light perspective that the YSM usually have. So it, we, in my, this matches the topics that we were discussing there. So for me, it was my first YSM. And usually when I go to conference, this is more like a peer talk about science. Sometimes we can meet some uh, uh, friends or colleagues that we know already. But uh, in this uh, YSM, uh, for me, it was really important because we were talking also about the soft skills, not only the hard skills, like how to deal with database, for example, or some other more serious thing in terms of uh, uh, the science itself, but also the human behind the scientists. So it was really nice. And as you can, could see for the topics highlighted by Toby. And so this was really nice, like knowing the human behind the surname, it was really good, especially after this pandemic years. Uh, we also got some tips for the more, more experienced uh, researchers, which was also really good because this gave us some kind of comfort. And, uh, and for me, at least, I was even more excited to uh, be here in the OSM in, the, uh, in this week. Also, during the Cluedo, for example, uh, we were supposed to talk about the, the game, but most of us, for, uh, from one point, we were just talking. So it was really good to uh, do this networking and get uh, also some more collaborations and know people that, for example, we, ha we had a decent hold for a while and then finally we could meet. So for me, the overall uh, feeling was really amazing. And uh, I was like, uh, in terms of networking and being reassured, the YSM was of high value. So I hope that the other participants also felt the same. And I'm now after the first one, I'm really looking forward for the next events. Uh, now I'll, I'll uh, give the floor to Mehdi to talk a little bit more about the ECN itself. Thank you, Juliana. Uh, before you let, we let you go, we just put in a plug here for the Early Career Network. This was actually something that came out of the last YSM and really started growing in 2018 up until today. So we have um, a lot of members. If you're if you consider yourself early career, please find us on the pages website. We have our own tab there with all the information you'll need. But we um, we have a steering committee and we have regional representatives. We try to plug into all of the working groups as well. And we all are involved in various activities. So there's webinars. We have dedicated writing sessions and a write club. This year we started a science cluster. Um, occasionally organize workshops and also have a blog. Um, we are, can you advance, <laughs> Juliana? Advance the slide. There's just, yep. <laughs> we are, we want more um, regional representatives. So these are people from across the globe that can um, recruit members and communicate with members and really bolster the activities we have going on in different regions. And so, again, please um, check us out. If you're early career, there's ways to sign up to the mailing list and be involved. Thank you. Thank you, Toby, Maddy, and Juliana for this short report on what happened during the YSM. And uh, for the following of this uh, session or plenary session, I will give the microphone to uh, Sarah, who will be the chairperson for the end of this session. Thanks so much, Marie France. It's my great pleasure to introduce three members of the local organizing committee, who I'm sure you've all heard from already many times this week Ilham, Rashid, and Mathieu. Please. Hi, everyone. 
Uh, we are getting close to the end of this meeting now. <clears throat> I must say first that uh, it has been a, an honor and a pleasure, really, to be part of the of the local organizing committee with you, Ilham Rashid, Asmae, Abdelmula, Hanan. Uh, on behalf of the of this great team, I'd like to thank all the speakers, all the conveners for the great talks, for uh, the great discussions, because this is what really makes uh, these kind of events uh, a success. So, <clears throat> by the way, I'd like to remind everyone uh, that the recordings of all the sessions and the posters will be available uh, during uh, 30 days. <clears throat> so if you missed a presentation that uh, you, you wanted to see, uh, you can still watch watch it on the on the website. So we've all assisted to this meeting uh, from home or from our office, but uh, I really felt like I've been traveling to fantastic places um, from North Pole to the South, through the tropics. It's been really great. I hope you enjoyed the, this meeting as much as I did. Now, uh, it'd be, it would have been nice to, uh, to say goodbye over a drink in a closing party. But I suppose that would make it uh, even better at the at the next at the next uh, OSM meeting, where I, I hope we all we'll all see we'll see you uh, again. But I still think we all deserve a, a toast for this uh, for this conference. So uh, cheers to all of you. I hope you en you enjoyed it. Okay. Well. Uh, thank you very much, Mathieu, for, for these uh, words. Um, I would like to add that as, uh, as organizers of this open science meetings, we meeting we would have been very happy to host you in uh, on site in Morocco. And I think you have heard uh, Ilham describing what you, you have missed, unfortunately. But on the other hand, we are also happy to save the, the, the planet from additional CO2 in the atmosphere. Uh, with this online version. And as Mathieu was saying, I, I hope, uh, uh, as all of us, that the next meeting will be uh, on site somewhere and we will be able to meet and, and talk about science and have a drink uh, all together. So, uh, yeah, I, I did en enjoy many talks. And I, as Mathieu said, I have been traveling with all these talks, fantastic talks. And I, I hope that uh, you and, and all of us have enjoyed this, this uh, online meeting with the, all these fantastic talks and also the, the, the super fantastic uh, shock logic team in the backstage who have been very reactive. This is a site that you haven't seen, but believe me, there were tens or maybe hundreds of, of WhatsApp uh, messages and emails uh, going back and forth between them and us and trying to make things going as smooth as possible. We hope, we do hope really that everything was really smooth and uh, you have been able to enjoy all the, the talks and, and discussions. So I would like to wish you all um, a great success in your, in your research and cheers to your health and see you in next cheers. OSM. <laughs> Yeah, hello from the fan club of the six OSM. And thank you all for this great week of super diverse and rich program. Thank you so much for putting the effort on it. I have gathered some impressions for the pages six OSM with some pictures that I took within the uh, private spheres or what I found in Twitter. It was really nice to see the feedback of the colleagues. Thank you so much Shoklogic for the great technical support you have provided us during the whole week and I would like to thank you for being here and wish to see you again at the pages 7th OSM. Thank you. And thank you Sarah for, for sharing this, uh, uh, this, this part of the uh, closing ceremony. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the family is happy I'm done. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I will take over. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, because uh, Sarah just rushed into my office saying that uh, there is some internet
problem on their side. Yesterday it was on my side, so we are sharing the problem. That's nice. Um, so thank you very much for uh, for your words, um, Rashid, Mathieu, Ilham. And uh, yes, I'm sorry that I, I don't have anything to drink with you. You should have told me. <laughs> um, so the... Um, sorry? Yes. Uh, I want just to, to thank... Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be here uh, to close uh, this successful uh, conference. And uh, I want to thank you uh, uh, for giving me this chance, uh, this chance to be uh, to be among the organizing committee and also to participate in the OSM and YSM, uh, where I learned a lot and uh, I meet other researchers uh, from the other country, and uh, it was uh, and uh, it was a great pleasure. Thank you again, and chill. <laughs> thank you, Asmai. Uh, so, uh, Sarah, you're back. Yes, sorry about that. Uh, the, the pleasure of online conferences, internet is important. <laughs> um, thank you very much, the local organizing committee. Without you, we really could not have done this. It went extremely well. I think all things considered, and I think we really cannot express our thanks to you enough. Um, with that, I'd like to turn the floor over to Billy Tinner, one of the PAGE's co-chairs, um, who will also give thanks in the name of the PAGE's Scientific Steering Committee. Thanks, Billy. So, hey, everybody. It was great fun to listen to you. And I would just say that this OSM was uh, impressive science, and we discussed many, many things, new things in this open science meeting. And this meeting in Morocco, I was feeling, although virtual, was extremely successful and generated new ideas and contacts. And what impressed me most is this perfect organization, uh, despite the challenges of the virtual conference. So this was uh, really impressive. So we are very pleased I'm uh, very, very grateful that it went so well, because I can tell you we were quite of worry in the IPO, but also in the scientific steering committee. Our best thanks, our most thanks uh, for the organization of the OSM, they go to the local organizing committee, mostly based in Morocco, but I have seen some also in France and Germany and other countries. And if you wonder about the order of the names, uh, it's just the last name, but I will tell the first name. So I start with Abdel Mula, with many thanks also to Asme, then Lucen, Abdel Ghani, then to Ilam, to Yassin, to Mathieu, to Rashid, to Abdel Ghani, to Mohamed, to Zuir, to Mustafa, to Hanan, and to Abdel. Theta. So this was really great and we joined very much. In addition to the local organizing committee, we had some actions by the PAGES fellows. And if you wonder who are the PAGES fellows, the PAGES fellows are the former members of the SSC, the, the emeriti or the retired people, uh, still young, of course, but not active anymore in the scientific program committee. They were back again, and I thank you with to Asfa, to Cristiano, to Mike, to Lindsay, and to Katrin for their engagement in supporting the local organizing committee. Last but equally important, I think, and we already heard it for the OSM and for the great success of the OSM is the IPO team in Bern, and here especially for the OSM Marie France and Sarah. So thank you so much for being so engaged and being always with us. Uh, if we had questions, we could just write to you. I don't know how you manage, but we got answers in the same day, sometimes even in the same hour. That was really very impressive. Uh, and Sarah and Marie France, you also did a great central work in the YSM. So I feel with you, you must be quite tired right now. But now we have a week of break. 
before the scientific steering committee meeting of pages will start. So hopefully you can recover a little bit. Ah, so I would like to say some a few words to pages because this is a great occasion. Uh, so pages is unique uh, bottom up global research project of future earth. So bottom up means uh, that the research questions are identified by you, by the pages community. And they are assessed in working groups. So that's where the science is driven, this global research program. So if you have a good idea and you are listening to us right now, just submit a proposal for a new global research working group to pages. Pages funding will then allow the working groups to meet and to develop new data and hopefully breakthrough scientific breakthroughs. Besides that, also very unique uh, to pages in the paleo community, I think, is the use of the past to improve climate, ecosystem, and land use projections for future conditions, so that we really care about the future. So insights from the past are used for mitigation, landscape management, and protection, and we heard many very nice uh, presentations all about that. And it was also our motto. So the motto was the great summary of this uniqueness of pages. I think uh, in this direction, a lot of progress has been achieved during the past years uh, presented here at this meeting. Nevertheless, I think uh, that there is still some potential to improve this very important aspect of PU research. So that in future, we may actually overcome the climate and biodiversity crisis we are facing right now. So thank you very much to all of you for contributing to this great, great pages effort. Thank you so much, Willy, for those kind words. And with that, I would like to give the floor to Marie-France Loutre, the executive director of pages, for some closing remarks and to close this meeting. Thanks, Marie-France. Yes, thank you. Uh, not, not easy to conclude such a meeting, but um, yeah, I was thinking in this community, it's not unusual to look into the past. And so I thought maybe that's something I should do, but I will not go to the quaternary. Um, I just wanted to, to have some idea on, well, to look into the dynamics that, that brought us uh, here today. So in 2019, the Agade was selected to be the venue for the DOSM. And very soon afterwards, I met the local organizing committee there in Agadir, and uh, I met very enthusiastic people who had already done a lot of work to identify the, the wonderful venue, to identify the social events, and so on. So it, it was already on track for a wonderful um, event. And yes, a couple of months later, all the world went into lockdown, but nevertheless, the whole team remained very optimistic, maybe too much. Um, and um, the work continued with those people with the local organizing committee, um, with regular planning meeting, with the call for session uh, until, well, for a couple of months, mid-20. Mid so I think I, I must really thank you all for the work that was done at that time when we were still thinking of an in-person on-site meeting. So thank you very much for, for the, the work for the, during the planning phase from the local organizer, the conveners, the, the scientific program committee. But unfortunately at that time, we, we had at the end to take the decision to postpone the meeting. It couldn't take place as initially planned in 2021. And then, uh, I remember that period that was so quiet, so silent, nothing happened. Um, for, for almost one year, we stayed there without knowing what to do. And then at the end, we had to decide to do something. So that's when we decided to run the, the meeting online. And 
taking that decision was, was definitely not easy, but also it meant that it will be a completely different meeting, another meeting start to organize. It's a new conference that has, has start, started somehow with many other challenges, including deciding for a platform to organize it, and also with a slightly reorganized local organizing team, because, well, some competence were also needed uh, additional to what we, we already had. And so suddenly I had the feeling that the time accelerated during that period, that everything had to be done very quickly. The, the registration was started. Um, well, we, we were also maybe working with a more focused local organizing team. There were a lot of last minute change to deal with both at uh, the, the SPC and scientific program committee level at the local organizing committee level uh, at the pages level so a lot of things and now we are here at the end of this week of the OSM um, we had well we already heard about that we had really many great talks during the sessions during the plenary and uh, I hope that this meeting gives you the opportunity to reconnect with uh, each other, to get the last update on scientific topics, but also maybe to identify new collaboration, to get insight into topics that are not exactly within your expertise. Indeed, this is really also the objective of the OSM networking, meeting, identifying new, new research topic. So I must really also extend, and we already mentioned it, but I really want to tell again, extend my thanks to the, the ShockLogic team. They, they have been working behind the scenes and uh, I have absolutely no idea of how it was behind the scene, but uh, thanks to them, we did not face major technological or technical issues. And it means that we, we were able to have a, a smooth meeting. And so to focus as scientists, we could focus on our science. We didn't have to care too much about technology. So thanks, thanks very much to the whole team. And of course, I must also send a very big thank you to Ilham, Rashid, Mathieu, and Abdel Mullah, with whom I've been working very closely during the preparation stage of the meeting. I know that they are not the whole uh, local organizing team, but they are those with whom I've been working uh, most of the time from the local organizing team. So thank you very much to all who made this meeting possible. and. Um, I apologize if I forgot someone. So you are all thanks for, for your work, for your participation, uh, for being here uh, this evening. And uh, I really hope that you enjoyed the, the meeting, the OSM. And uh, well, with this, um, I close the, the Open Science meeting and hope to see you soon.